me speaking to the players and them welcoming the way that they they have and um, that, that that's just made me not worry about things that they're not worried about to be completely honest I, I understand um, I'm, I'm sensitive to the situation I know I'm one of only three head uh, male head coaches in the WNBA um, and so I take responsibility for that you know I know that People are questioning it and um, agree or, or disagree. I, uh, I'm going to do the best job that I can and, um, you know, do the best for, for our players and try to put them in positions to get better and be successful. <laughs> you have to love, love when um, a man says, I'm sensitive to this and, you know, <laughs> Like, what are you sensitive to? You don't know anything. And like, look, I'm not going to sit up here and say that you don't take a job that's offered to you, right? Like, we're all going to do that. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But it's going to come with criticism because who the hell yes. are you? What is your relationship <laughs> to women's basketball? Who else right. was considered for this position? And why are come you on. being paid more than any other right. WNBA head coach so with that i'm because just gonna let y'all take it away because i know y'all have the gospel to preach so sabria let's start with you what what is your reaction to this hire of nate tibbets for the phoenix mercury i want him and everyone else to be very very clear we are not criticizing your hiring and the fact that you are now the highest paid coach in the history of the W because you are a man, because we support Kurt Miller. And I'm sure everyone would be happy if coach Gino Oriema said he was coming to coach in the W. We are talking about your hire because we do not believe that you are qualified for this position, especially on a team like Phoenix that needs someone that knows what they're doing. Like Coach Muffet McGraw said, women are judged on their success, men on their potential. If the organization has to come out about your hiring and include girl dad and your father's w women's basketball coaching experience because <laughs> you don't have any, then we shouldn't even be having this conversation. Next. No, thank you. Yeah, no, well, I agree. I'm going to pick it back. I'm going to piggyback off of that and say, yes, I'm criticizing because he's a man. And I'm, I'm saying that just from a standpoint of that's part, I feel like that's part of the reason why they paid him more money to, to tease him, to get him into this league to coach. I feel yes. like if he had been a woman, they would have gave him the base pay or maybe just a few, you know, a few extra thousand dollars. But as far as I'm concerned, I feel like his gender played a, a hell of a role in giving him that type of money. And then to kind of like talk about his experience or lack thereof, uh, um, is this going to be now be a thing where we're going to start seeing some of these G League head coaches? Um, from the NBA coming over into this league to kind of test and see if they can kind of handle a pro league per se. Is this what we're dealing with now? Because now I'm, I'm just looking at it from every angle where it's like they pointed out that he's a girl dad. What does that have to do with him coming over here to coach pro women's basketball? Like, are, are the babies playing too? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm a little bit confused. I'm a little bit confused. So yes, I have all the questions and I did not, I was not, um, I wasn't able to buy into this hire, you know, considering the press conference and him saying certain things. And I'm just like, sweetie, they didn't even brief you. They, they should have gave this a day or two, or maybe just a couple of a, a week, maybe before they put him in front of the media so that they could kind of go over some things before he had to say what he needed to say. Yeah, yeah, I'll just know. piggyback off of, I'll oh, go ahead and add. Well, Kelsey, I wanted to ask you because piggyback away, but I also noticed in your feed, you had, we need to pay black women, right? And I, I know that's yes. related to this. So when, yes. after you piggyback, please elaborate on what you mean by that. Yeah, of course. You know, I'm so glad Sabria brought up um, the Muffet McGraw tweet because I think she said it right. And it's not just in sports that this happened. I'm sure many of us have been in positions, left organizations because we felt like we weren't getting our fair share of what we were due. Hello. And essentially what this hire, what this hire says is let's give him an opportunity and a chance to basically test the waters, right? And this is a professional women's basketball league, folks. We're talking about the growth of the W. Again, I talked about earlier, we're talking about a league that's in its 27th season. The momentum is building. And if you watch the Phoenix Mercury last season, 
season, they don't have time to come play around with somebody who's trying to think about if this is the right move or opportunity for him. Mm -hmm. So all that to say, mm -hmm. I just think about, you know, I remember not too long ago, a couple of years ago, having a, having the same conversation but about how more men were getting opportunities in the WNBA. Yes. And now here we are mm -hmm. once again, when yeah, a man yeah. was basically gift wrapped an opportunity and he was able to take it. And again, act like this is something that could be played around with. And for that, I take serious offense to that because again, all of us know WNBA players. We know the work that goes into it. We know the work that many are about to go put in overseas to continue to play this game mm -hmm. of basketball Hello. that they love. And so mm -hmm. I really thought this was a mm -hmm. shot, a slap in the face. And let's remember, if it's the Phoenix Mer Mercury, it's not just basketball that they're trying to worry about there. We have the whole thing with Skylar Diggins, I know that we've all been talking about, you know, that obviously will yes. still hopefully come to an end. There's a lot that needs to happen with this organization. And to me, and Nat, you thought you, you said it, I wonder who else was considered for the job because essentially what happened was somebody knew somebody who knew somebody and they were all in that same circle. And one of the circle people were hired. And I don't think anybody oh, was yeah. considered from the outside. So the same conversation we had in the NFL with the Rooney rule or the same conversation we had mm -hmm. with Jeff Saturday, all of a sudden Come getting on. a head coaching job in the National Football League. I think this needs to be a more serious conversation about how this man, and again, I'm not going to fully discredit him. I only know what I can read on his background. And honestly, it's not a lot there to read you know, about his mm -hmm. basketball experience. And he'll be given an opportunity and chance. But if this fails, and I'm going to say I, I'm not, I don't have high expectations for the Mercury under him, I think everyone's going to be once again looking at this leadership saying, once again, why can't Phoenix get it right? Well, why can't they get it right? It's mm -hmm. because they're not giving everybody a fair share or opportunity. It's a slap in the face to Becky Hammond, who was the highest paid. It's a slap in the face to Cheryl Reeve and so many others who have paved the way mm -hmm. for this woman's game. So all of a sudden, be sitting here doing their job and see a new person come in and essentially take the pay that I think they quite frankly deserved. That was just, again, given to a man who has not yet proved anything in the W. Right. So I'll leave it there in that. Yeah, well, let me say and this. I think it's the, Sabria, I'll okay, give you the good. last word. Just let me say this. I don't... I don't have like, you know, Kelsey's a traditional journalist. I am not. So I, I'm going to just say like, I don't give a damn how he performs because here's the thing, right? This man has had no ties to women's basketball besides his daddy, right? Not him, his father. Yeah. Okay. And if he wanted a job in women's basketball, he could have gotten one a long time ago. All right. And we know the trend and we know the pattern. If he does even have success, okay, then mm -hmm. he's going to leave and pick up and go back to the NBA. You mark my words. Okay. Oh, my so yes. I yep. just do not appreciate this hire because we all know mm -hmm. it's a foregone conclusion what's going to happen, whether he succeeds or fails. And the WNBA is not your stepping stone. Stone. It deserves, no. first of all, it deserves coaches, okay, that are committed to it and want to be there and want to help grow the game. Mm -hmm. They deserve to be paid accordingly so more coaches want to stay and work for the WNBA. And also, they should not, in my opinion, be being paid more than the players, which is another issue because he is paid more, mm -hmm. a lot more, and so than the highest paid WNBA player. So yep. I don't give a damn about this man's credentials. I don't care what he may be. This is a problematic hire and it is privilege. And it, it, is, it is just not what we need to see. Sabria, last word, please. We watched coach Becky Hammond have an amazing career as a player in the WNBA and go coach in the NBA mm -hmm. where she was jerked around mm -hmm. and discarded Mm -hmm. for head coaching yep. positions because she wasn't quote unquote qualified enough. Then she comes to the WNBA right. and goes back to back <laughs> as a yes. WNBA mm -hmm. champion. We watched Hello. the the Chicago Sky coach and I and I hate to bring it up because I love Coach James Way. We watched him be executive of the year, coach of the year, get a championship mm -hmm. and leave the Chicago sky high and dry at the beginning of the season because he was taking meetings with Toronto during the preseason mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. in Canada. We watched the Phoenix Mercury hire Vanessa Nygaard with almost the same resume as he that he has last season and it didn't work out. And when it didn't mm -hmm. work out the second year after they kept her, they passed the buck and the bag to a black woman, a former WNBA player, oh. Nikki Blue. So when we talk about who we're disrespecting and a slap in the face, yeah. that's the mm -hmm. biggest slap in the mm -hmm. face. She immediately yeah. changed that organization around. The camaraderie went out the window. That like all the issues that they had, she was able to lift team morale and confidence immediately mm -hmm. with that team. And 
we didn't even know she wasn't being considered. I don't recall seeing a press release saying that she was out. I don't Come recall on. seeing a press mm -hmm. release saying that they were interviewing anybody. And I don't recall seeing a press release saying that they decided to move on from her and start interviewing other people. So when we talk about mm -hmm. a league and, and investing in the players and giving back to the people who built the league, you had a Black woman, former WNBA player with assistant and then interim head coach experience. You threw all of that out yeah. the window and stay here to someone with from the G League to the Orlando Magic who ain't been to the postseason in how many years? Best of luck to your Struggling. organization. Blessing. Yeah. BG mm -hmm. and Spider well, deserve better. They do. They do. They do. Guys, I honestly, I love talking to you and I wish we could keep going, but we do have to break here. So thank you so much, Sabria, for joining, Dawn for joining. Y'all will definitely thank be back. Thank you, ladies. To continue to talk the thank W and women. Love y'all. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.